This is the Canon C70 cinema camera. In this video, I wanna give you my off the cuff first impressions of using this camera. Um, and I'm coming at this from the context of being a, obviously a YouTuber, but also I'm a creative in a church and a worship ministry. We make lots of videos for our church. And I'm excited about this guy. There's a lot of new cameras that have come out this year. You've got the A7S III, you've got the R5, you've got Blackmagic 12K cinema camera. It's, it's never been a more exciting time to be a filmmaker. And this just kind of adds to the the, the the overwhelming options we have when it comes to investing in video production gear for our churches. So I'll unpack for you in kind of this off, off the cuff uh, manner uh, here in this video, what, I, what I'm really excited about when it comes to this camera and you know why you would want to buy this one as opposed to some of the other options out there. So I haven't been able to use it super long. I've used it for a couple hours this weekend. I'm borrowing it from Matt, a local Canon rep. I highly recommend you get hold of him if your church wants to um, upgrade to a bunch of Canon cameras and Canon glass. Uh, I'll put a link with more info on how to get a hold of him in the description of this video. But thanks, Matt, for letting me borrow this camera and all the other cameras you randomly drop off at my office once in a while. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, and the, I'll admit, I was a bit salty when I saw that this camera was released because a couple months ago, I bought the Canon C300 Mark III. And this camera and the C300 Mark III can pretty much produce identical images. There's definitely some advantages to the big brother, the C300. It can shoot in RAW. It can do a lot of things that, quite honestly, now that I've used it for a while, I don't even use some of those higher end features. Um, so that's why I was a little salty when this came out because it's, you know, roughly almost half, about half the price of the C300 Mark III. It's also nice and compact. I do a lot of run and gun shooting, especially for YouTube. Um, so there's a lot of things I like about this. I probably will end up buying one of these as my primary um, or as my secondary camera. Um, right now we're using Canon C300 Mark III and then there's a Canon C200 as my secondary camera. The C200 will probably uh, retire that pretty soon um, or just use it as an additional third angle when we need it. Um, but this camera, so much cool things going on with it. And here, here's who I think this camera will be for. I think it's gonna be for churches wanting to buy some professional video gear that could actually serve a dual purpose. Um, I think this is something to think about when you're, when you're upgrading to live streaming, new live streaming gear at your church especially when it comes to the cameras. Do you want to invest in gear that can kind of fill two purposes? One, be, one purpose being capturing video for your live stream on Sundays and also uh, the other purpose, capturing video for other creative video projects that you're doing for your church throughout the week, like making bumper videos or announcement videos or other cinematic projects uh, you might be working on for your church. And I think this is something to seriously consider. I, I, I only foresee churches becoming more and more like their own little video production studios as time goes on. Of course, we had the events of this year, which kind of accelerated that process, but I just think this is the future. Pastors, worship ministry leaders, we're all becoming filmmakers, and this is becoming a very important tool for what we do, whether it's worship service related or whether it's uh, the other things that we do uh, communication related outside of our worship gatherings. So something to think about. I think this, this camera could really fill like a, both purposes really well because on the live streaming side of things, the, it's, the image quality is, is amazing. The, the amount of dynamic range it has to just capture great quality, to have great color science um, right out of the camera body. You know, you can color grade anything in post these days, especially when all these cameras are shooting and um, just really high bit rate codecs that you can really alter the color afterwards. But in a live streaming environment, you want the video footage just look great straight out of camera. Most churches don't really wanna to have to build out the infrastructure to shade their video and, and alter the color of the video before it goes into the switcher. So this camera, all these Canon cinema cameras, you know, the, the look that it has when you're able to, um, I was talking to uh, John at Red Rocks, you guys saw that video, they're using C200s. They shoot in C-Log3 and then they apply the Rec 709 LUT and 
that's what's being sent out of the HDMI cable and it just looks amazing without having to do anything afterwards. So it will look great color wise, dynamic range wise, it'll look really awesome. Um, I really think dynamic range is often the biggest indicator of using a very cheap camera for your church's live stream because the highlights are blown out, the shadows are like super dark or super grainy um, and you're not gonna have that issue with a camera and a sensor like this. I think it has like 16 stops of dynamic range which is fantastic. And then of course you got the new RF lenses coming out. This is another thing I was kind of salty about with this because I, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those deals where it's like, okay, Canon, if you're gonna go this route, like why would you release one camera, the C300 in 2020 that has, takes EF lenses and then, why, then this camera right here that um, only takes RF lenses. I mean, I guess it's a good excuse for me to buy more lenses from you but my bank account's not happy with that type of, that type of arrangement. So, um, but these lenses are cool. Like I think what's gonna happen, I'll probably buy one of these cameras soon when it's actually released. I'll probably start buying more of these lenses as well. And I'll just, also there's, they came, they're coming out with like a new speed booster adapter. Um, I think to be able to put EF lenses on an RF lens mount. So I'll probably get one of those to use all my EF lenses. But this is something that we'll, we all have to think about as we're upgrading or making any changes to these, these new systems here. So from a live streaming standpoint, I really think this can get the job done. It's got everything that I would look for in it, including you know the full HDMI cable output. It doesn't have a SDI out, which some of the, like the C300 does, I guess that's another uh, benefit there, but you can just get an adapter or something like that if you're trying to send SDI to a video hub or a switcher. So let's talk also about the using this for other creative projects at your church. So this is similar to what I'm using these cameras for, for, for this YouTube channel. So this video, for example, I've got the C300 on a tripod. I got a microphone, you know, plugged directly into the camera. I don't have any external recorders or anything like that for um, audio or video. Just very easy and quick for me to have, get a high quality image. And I'm not even gonna do any grading in post. You're seeing C-Log3, with the LUT applied in Final Cut Pro um, for this specific profile. And that's it, it just, in, in seconds, I have a great, uh, a great image um, right out of the camera body, right off the, the uh, CF Express card. Um, and that's something you'll have with this camera too, right? These have pretty much identical sensors. Um, they're Super 35 sensors. Uh, it'd be cool if it was full frame. Imagine if they made a, kind of like this, but the, the mini version of a C500 Mark II, that would be really awesome uh, to have this like a full frame, maybe just a little bit bigger of a camera um, to handle that. So who knows, they probably will. I'll probably buy this and then they'll come out with that version the next week. <laughs> Cause that's the way, that's the way it works. Um, so it's got, you know, the amazing sensor. It's got the built-in, um, quarter or XLR inputs. They're mini XLR inputs. They had to make a mini, but you can get some adapters for that easily. Um, lots of connectivity that you'd want and need there. And then it's got built-in ND filters. I think these ND filters are really important if you're doing a lot of filmmaking outside of your worship gatherings. And you could use ND filters in the worship gatherings if you if you had to, if it exposure rec uh, needed it. But when you're doing creative projects, doing a run and gun, like I don't wanna to have to worry about throwing on ND filters on a lens. I like having them built in. Cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, um, they don't have that. I think you can get the Ursa Mini, they do. Similar price point, but it's also bigger. So I just love how compact this is and how much stuff is inside it. I think it really is gonna lend itself well if you and anybody on your church team is, are doing some run and gun video projects um, and you just wanna be able to whip it out, get the right exposure, and you have everything you need here as well to put audio into the into the video feed. Um, it's really awesome. It's got a fan built in, so things will stay cool, won't overheat like the R5 does. And then it just feels really good in the hands. Like I just love this grip. It feels similar to the larger cinema cameras, but it's not as heavy. But it's heavy enough to like I feel like I can get some really stable shots on this camera as well. Speaking of shots on this camera, I took some footage at church, so I'll play some of the B-roll uh, for you over this video. Hopefully you can see um, just the quality of it. I really didn't do anything to this footage. I shot in 23.98. 
Um, it can do 4K at 120, which is really awesome. I didn't do any, I didn't capture any of that. But again, like the footage for me, it's, it's nothing surprising because I've worked with the C300 Mark III and they have the identical sensor. So um, the, a lot of the, the videos you've seen on my channel the past two months, um, that's what we've been using. And you know, you can just tell like it's a really great image. Um, what else about this camera? Battery life, you know, you can put the big old BP A30 or A60 batteries in here and have plenty of record time. And then the menu settings, you can navigate things with a touch screen on this. I wish my C300 had that, um, but I love, yeah, I love how this is like an actual functional touch screen to be able to, to navigate the, the camera settings. The thing I don't like about um, this guy as much as the C300 is I, I like the C300. I like how it has a larger um, uh, LCD display on there. Um, this one is, I know they had to make it smaller to, to fit in the small form factor, but it's just smaller. And then now that I've been using the C300 for a while, I'm not, I'm not used to this smaller screen. Um, but it's, you know, I could live with it, live with it if I had to. Um, let's talk about again, like why, why would you, if you're, if you're in, your, in, in a situation right now where you're like, our church wants to invest in new cameras. We're thinking about, um, you know, perhaps a black magic pocket cinema camera line, um, the 6K version that has a super 35 millimeter sensor and you can put EF uh, mount lenses on it. Maybe you want to consider going this route and maybe instead of getting three black magic 6K cameras, you could get two of these cameras and the appropriate, the RF lenses. And you, you might, you might like that route better. Cause again, you're getting more of these features for, um, advanced, more advanced, uh, cinematography, I guess you could say, or the built-in ND filters and all the great stuff, a lot more connectivity that I think it can serve a dual purpose more. So that's why I would consider in going this route instead of the black magic route. If you're trying to just get more out of your camera and you want something that's a bit more run and gun friendly, um, the black magic pocket six K's are awesome. I think they're better for like uh, a studio environment or just for your worship live stream environment where they're plugged into a power adapter and they're just sending you a great, you know, uh, feed out your HDMI port to your video switcher for run and gun stuff. You really want to have stuff th uh, you really want to have cameras that are great on battery power and have great battery life and have the built in ND filters and things like that. I think just those are really important. Um, cause you don't want to be messing around with, batteries or you don't want to have to, um, or batteries dying on you. You don't want to have to necessarily be messing around with a bunch of ND filters and things like that, um, while you're on the go, uh, shooting, shooting things on the, on the run. So something to consider there. And yeah, I mean, now it's like with this camera, it's like, I don't know why anyone would buy a, a new C200 at this point. Um, because I think, yeah, you might, I think they're like, they're either identical pricing or very, very close. Um, this just, this just seems like the future. Um, maybe at this point you could start seeing some discounted, like used C200s out there and you could still build a great live streaming system, um, with those cameras that, you know, they shoot 4k. So I don't, I don't think they're, they're going to be, um, outdated anytime soon, especially from that standpoint. Um, but the C200 is, is nowhere near as strong as this camera is in my opinion, when it comes to the run and gun creative filmmaking that you're gonna do uh, for your church. So something you wanna consider there. And yeah, if you're considering considering the C300 Mark III, uh, it is an awesome camera, but I, I don't think it's worth the additional $6,000 <laughs> beyond this camera, especially if you don't need to be able to have to shoot in a raw format. Um, and if you don't really care too much about maybe the, the larger LCD screen, cause you could always mount another LCD screen on here. Um, so save the money and I would get two of these instead of one C300 Mark three. And that's about it. You know, you, you have the R5, you have the a7S three. Those are great cameras as well. But to me, they're just not going to be as strong from a video standpoint. Sure. They have full frame, but the R5, you get the overheating issues. It could be a great photo stills camera. I think, um, 8k stuff is overrated. The Sony a7S III, I haven't got my hands on one, but from far as I can tell, if you really want a full frame mirrorless camera that, yeah, it could do live streaming, it could do um, uh, creative work for your church, then 
perhaps that is a, a more a economical, better route to go. Um, although I actually think the price point is pretty darn close. Like I said, if this had, if this had full frame, a full frame sensor like the C500, but in this compact form, that would be that would be like my dream camera. Because um, I've I was able to mess around with C500 Mark II a couple weeks ago, and it's just like mm, I I want one <laughs> really badly. Um, so. Those are my thoughts. Those are my off-the-cuff thoughts. I do think the, C the Canon C70 is gonna be most useful for churches looking for uh, a camera that has a dual purpose um, to be a really great live streaming camera as well as a camera for your creative filmmaking. It's not gonna be the best camera for everybody because it's still you know, at 5,500 bucks for the body. It's still cost prohibitive for a lot of churches, but keep in mind, maybe you start with two of these and then in a year you add a third camera and then another year you can add a fourth camera or maybe you start with you know two of these and you get a, a used C200 for like a third camera that you could cut to when you really need it. Um, so you can always just kind of think, be future minded about building out these systems. Um, get something like this that is going to be future proof for a while but you don't have to drop all your money on you know this camera model if obviously it's, it's not realistic for you guys' budget at this point. So I hope this was helpful. This camera, I think you can pre-order it. It might be available come December. I think they'll start shipping it. Um, so far, it really does get my stamp of approval. Um, and it's just, I'm really excited for, for, for even future offerings to come with Canon now that they're starting to make this, this into such a compact form factor. Um, like I said, never been a more exciting time to be a filmmaker, especially amateur one. Um, like me, I barely have any clue what I'm doing with this stuff, but uh, these are really important tools. Um, and I can just testify to that, the importance these days of investing into the right video gear, whether it's for your church, um, you know, it's only gonna become more and more important over time, or for my YouTube channel, right? It's like, that's why, you know, I spend too much money on cameras is just because, you know, I wanna be able to deliver Really great product for you guys uh, watching. I wanna be able to create a great product for our, our clients and customers in worship ministry school, watching our courses. Um, and these are the right tools for the job and it's totally worth the investment. So um, if you guys found this helpful, hit the thumbs up button. Let's start a conversation down below in the comments. If you have thoughts on this camera, what cameras are, are your church um, looking into purchasing right now? Uh, why would you buy this camera? Why would you not buy this camera? Let me know. And then, as I mentioned, my friend Matt um, Carmen, he's with Canon, and he can answer all your questions about the different models of cameras that they have. I'm gonna put some info down below in the description if you wanna get a hold of him. You know, like he's helped churches do complete build outs for their broadcast system. He helped Red, Red Rocks do their broadcast system. Um, he's helping other churches with this as well. So he's a guy to get connected with. Um, great, great dude. Thanks, Matt, for letting me borrow this. <laughs> I always choke around. It's like everybody's gonna find a Canon rep uh, as as a friend because it's, it's fun to be able to try these things before they are um, they're actually released on the market. Um, so check that out. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video. I know it's a little different than usual doing this off the cuff recording, uh, but I'm a little crunched for time this week and. I just thought this would be just as helpful for you guys doing it in this more podcast-like format. So that's all I have for you. Smash like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.